Look at this old cup. I've had this for so long. It's old and stained, just like me. <laughs> ah, anyway. John, JJ, and I are going to find out how's the hike in the Bob Marshall Wilderness on the Chinese Wall Loop. There it is, the Bob. <laughs> the mighty Bob. Take you through our trip planning and how we got here a little later on. Oh baby. Just climbed up the ridge. Gorgeous view. Trail's a little sketchier than we thought in this section. <laughs> but uh well, we know what we're doing, but yeah. A little primitive campsite with a view. We just climbed up from the river and look, boom, there's the trail. Now, I've downloaded a GPS track from someone on Gaia and they made the same mistake we just made because uh, when they come back off the loop, they, they continue straight down this very beautifully well-defined trail. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a little sketchier than we really thought it should be. This, much better. Making our way up 202, little intersection here. Trail cutting off this way. Deer Creek, 276. We're gonna continue on 202, I think most of the day. There'll be an intersection up here soon with 203, but that goes, if you're gonna go clockwise, you turn left and go 203, we're not. We're gonna go counterclockwise. And go up 202 because uh, John's son is out here uh, backpacking with some friends from Alberta. And we're going to try to run into them at some point, either later today or tomorrow morning. So that's why we're heading off in the counterclockwise direction. It might actually end up giving us some really, maybe a little better view as we come into the Chinese wall area as well. Which will be exciting. The old burn. I think we might have to walk through some of that, guys, in a little while. If we're not entering it already. We were just saying about the view. JJ said, hey, look at this view. And I mean, it's hard to see now that I'm in the trees, but it's beautiful. Just stunning. And I'm pretty sure we're heading up that way. Intersection probably in about half a mile, I'm guessing. Yeah, just stunning. Intersection here, you could go this way if you wanted to. I don't see why you would, but you could. Uh, 265, but we're going to stay on 202. And come up to the intersection and make a big, big right-hand turn. Lots of trails up here, and it could be confusing, I suppose. But um, we're going to stay on 202, which is that way. We're pretty happy to see this bridge. A little sign here that says, No camping within 500 feet of the bridge. That's an interesting rule. Huh. Anyway, we're glad to see the bridge. Keep the feet dry. Let's have a look at this. And that's the intersection. So uh, left clockwise, right counterclockwise. And we'll be coming back this way in a couple of three days, whatever it is. Wow, look at that. Just stunning. Look at that, wow. And if I just come a bit to the right. <laughs> just stunning. A little more work to do though, up and over this ridge. And we're gonna try to find a spot for a break and lunch. Coming down to river level. I think that's gonna be a, well you can camp there, that's beautiful. Good spot for a break. Okay, here's our intersection. Pretty prairie cabins this way, but I'm pretty sure 
If we stay on 202, we're going to see it just toward the end of a little junction down here. So let's find out. Mystery solved. Cabin's over there. Right in there. Kind of. I'm going to zoom in more. It's going to be shaky. See it? There it is. As we enter the pretty prairie. Proper. You get out to these random areas, you start to get an eye for where you might want to camp, and we're not ready for that yet, but look. To me, look in here. Look at this place. I mean, that's got to be established in some way. Could be a great spot in bad weather. Oh yeah, there's uh, some benches. And, well, I think logs turn into benches and places to sit. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, please keep stock out of immediate campsite area. Yeah, lovely spot. Wow, what a campsite this would be. Wow. Our direction, of course. I pan around. I was just commenting, JJ, that there's you know not a large animal to be seen except John. <laughs> <laughs> there's some perspective right there. Look at this. Wow. Always look back. Stunning. Sawtooth Range starting to come into view now. And Arsenic Mountain. <laughs> Don't drink the water. <laughs> That's a, oh yeah, Arsenic Mountain. We just had a nice long break. Had some, uh, some water and snacks. Met John's son and their party coming the other way. And a couple of folks on horseback from Ohio. It was quite a little meeting there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's good. We have just happy found this <laughs> happy hour. It's happy hour for us because we found a camp right by the river. We can get cleaned up, lots of water, and uh, established. So we're, you know, our footprint is minimal. This is great. All right, we're going to, uh, what well, we'll set up and then I'll, <laughs> I'll show you around. Little shot of camp. One of these things is not like the others. Down here we have our Dan Durston uh, commercial. Dan builds Dan builds great tents. Based in Canada, knows what he's doing. That's for sure. The boys are having uh, a little pre-dinner, uh, little uh, pre-dinner beverage. Happy hour. I have my Lipton soup. It's five o'clock here, actually. And uh, Jim brought us a gift. I've never had this before. Yeah. Astronaut ice cream. Pretty excited about that. So uh, anyway, I'll try to talk a little trip planning a, little, a trip planning a little later uh, today or tomorrow morning. Uh, it's pretty simple. You're either going to keep going up here and get on the CDT and turn left, or you're going to turn left at Moose Creek. And the guys have some time constraints. So i got to be out of here um, on a certain day at a certain time. So we may just do Moose, which we've heard from others, including... Uh, including John's son today, that it's a, it's in great shape and it's beautiful. So lots of great options out here and there's just so much to explore. Uh, hard to expect to get it all in one trip. So it's just great to be in the Bob. Great to be here with these guys and it's going to be great to have supper. There's our view tonight from the mighty Bob. We've uh, had a gentleman join us who was just down doing some fishing. We had a nice dinner, but it was a bit sprinkly. As you can see some dark clouds still lingering over there but the sun has graced us with its presence here. So tomorrow, a uh, pretty straightforward day. We're gonna head up to Moose Creek and take that approach to the Chinese wall simply because of uh, a time constraint for the guys. You could do it either way and head up to the CDT, as I said earlier, but I think that's our play. So um, you know, pretty straightforward. Let me flash up what that looks like on Gaia. Here it is. You can see pretty standard lollipop. And uh, I have to say the trails out here are pretty good with regard to grade you know they're in good shape they're not too steep and uh, it's been a pleasant walk so far so we're looking forward to more of that tomorrow because we have to put on probably a few extra miles than we did today to get ourselves up for the Chinese wall so I'm going to enjoy a little more of this sunshine and uh, turn in and get a good night's sleep we'll see you in the morning
Morning. Day two in the bob. <laughs> We're gonna put some miles on today. We uh, plotted out a bit of a course last night. We'll head up Moose Creek. Try to position ourselves, you know, four or five miles from the Chinese wall tonight. And try to find a nice spot up in there. That'll give us some chance to explore the wall tomorrow as we head back down uh, on the other side toward the trailhead. You can tell behind me, here I come. Boom, <laughs> morning. Uh, foggy, foggy and kind of chilly. So everything, of course, is soaking wet and uh, we'll just have to pack it up that way because we do have to make some miles. Uh, pretty good night's sleep. This morning, though, uh, a pack of coyotes yelping and barking. So that was kind of neat. They're around here somewhere, but I heard them like, I know what that is. And uh, the gentleman that's here with us uh, for the night, uh, he said the same thing. So <laughs> always interesting to hear wildlife. And of course, not really a threat to us. So hopefully this fog's going to burn off because uh, if you can see that rise, we're going up it this morning. And then a pretty gradual climb. Nothing, there's nothing too severe until we kind of get toward the wall. But even that, by our standards, <clears throat> excuse me, no big deal. So... You could say it with me. You know exactly what I'm going to say. A little coffee and breakfast, <laughs> and off we go. One last look back, and the fog is clearing. And I've sent the boys ahead to clear the cobwebs. Can you knock all the wet off the bushes, too? <laughs> oh, over here to intersect the trail. Let me stop and put my rain jacket on. Yeah, you might need it. <laughs> well, not for long. You know, three or four hours, we'll be like, wow, is it ever hot? Nice little climb, look back at our campsite, down in there. Gorgeous morning, now that the fog is lifted and uh, well, somewhere up that away. Junction here, 202 goes that way. We're gonna head left, 261, and follow that up to the intersection with Moose Creek. Lots of beautiful meadows along here that we're walking into. You can tell falls here though, or almost. Everything's dry and changing color. Well, we're about five miles in and Glen Creek. We're gonna stop here for our first official break of the day, which gets us about a third-ish of the way to our goal. Oh, look, a little bridge. Very nice. That's some nice clean water. We just had a nice break here. Met another horse party coming through. And uh, just over here is a little campsite. There's a fire ring, place to sit. Probably a couple places for tents. You'd have to kind of wander around to find something that suited you. And it's just right here at Glen Creek. So for us, about four miles to the next big milestone when we turn left and go up Moose Creek. And... Um, well, it's a gorgeous day, as you can see. So the key now is good trail and stay hydrated. Now we're back out along the river. Beautiful. As you can see, pretty steady climb up and over this ridge to get to Moose Creek. Heck of a view as you look backwards though, isn't it? Moose Creek. A little milestone for us as we turn up Moose Creek, as I just said seconds ago. Nice little lunch. Gonna go across and wait for the other guys. Not worthy of the Ford cam because I'm gonna rock hop it right across there. Up to the intersection. We've come off 261. We're heading up 131, if you can see that in the sun. Speaking of the sun, we're now heading dead west. <laughs> so it's gonna be with us for a while. Uh, like right in front of us. But we are hitting this stretch now that we've been looking forward to. So we'll uh, walk up a few miles, start looking for campsites, set, our, set ourselves up for the Chinese wall. Ooh. JJ's very upset. Uh, this is the first log we've had to actually step over. So uh, we're gonna write a complaint. <laughs> Oh my gosh, no, all kidding aside, the trail has been in phenomenal condition. Like, just fantastic walking, it's easy, and well, well maintained. 
especially with all of this. Look, look at to my right. That's just insane how much fell. And look at the trail. So just a great job by everybody here who maintains it. It's a pleasure to walk. We're just going to shoot down here. There's uh, supposed to be a campsite along here, and I do see a trail. We're starting to think about this. It's hot. We can tack a couple miles on tomorrow. And so I thought we'd, uh, we thought we'd look down in here. You can see the, there have been horses hitched up here. There is a tiny little area where the fire is, and of course the water is right there. So we're over 12 miles now, which, as I said, we'll have to add some miles tomorrow uh, for sure. But this could have potential. So, let the guys have a look. And if we stay, I'll certainly let you have a look. We've decided to carry on another couple miles, make tomorrow a little bit easier, and hope that we can find a place. Let me flash up on you the layer or the tracks I downloaded from Gaia, somebody else's tracks, which I rarely do, but I'm glad I did in this case. So you can see on the right-hand side in the screen um, where we just were, basically. See all the little red squiggly lines? Somebody was down there doing a lot of things. And if you look ahead to your left, a couple of miles, you can see the same thing, and there are actually a lot more lines in that location. So did they stop? Did they camp? I've done that a lot. You know, I've done that a lot. Left my phone on and not stopped my track. And you show all these kind of spaghetti piles around where you've camped. Obviously, they picked water down there. So if we can get down there by the water, chances are we can find some flat spots to camp. And it would be another logical place on this stretch um, for something random. I want to show you something here. There's a, there's a flag. I don't know. And there's a, a blaze, and, and there, of course, is a very well-established trail. We've sent John into Scout. Uh, I'm going to flash up Gaia again, just because I mentioned it a few seconds ago in the video. So look, look, look right now where my arrow is, my position, and the little spot we thought we were going to. I want to tell you that because earlier when we were down at that campsite that I kind of showed you was a possibility, my arrow was still not to it, just like it isn't now. So, and you'll also see there a straight line from Gaia. Obviously lost the satellites at some point. So this could be the place we're thinking of going to, given that information. We've come up to where the GPS showed the second lines coming in. And there's another well-established path here. So two campsite options kind of relatively, like what, 500, 700 feet apart? So maybe you've got one giant meadow along the river out here. With lots of different options but this is a big trail a little shot around our random camp along moose creek and you can see uh the first head you see is actually john he's kind of exiled himself uh, away from us and then way in the back i'll zoom in here we go yeah the tents back there are ours that's jj's in the picture you can't really see mine to be honest but look at this view speaking of seeing look up here yeah pretty cool guys are getting ready for the supper John's got some sort of smoke signal going on here. Let me know if you get a reply. And then this is our water source. We've all uh, we've we've had some time freshening up. And now we're going to have some time with supper. But uh, yeah, look at this piece of paradise. Woohoo! There's the view tonight. <laughs> and you can see the valley we're going up. And I think we get a couple miles from the wall. It won't be hee-hee-hee. It'll be <laughs> Yeah, well, I think a thousand feet of the elevation gains in the last couple of miles, at least what I'm looking at in the maps tonight. But I'm really excited to see the Chinese wall. And we had a great day, even though it was super hot. And we all cleaned up and had a nice supper. And uh, we're, we're just, again, super excited to see this amazing thing that you can only see if you walk in. And I'm not going to say it tonight, but I will say good night. I need some sleep and you'll see, uh, well, you'll see me wide and bushy eyed, wide awake and bushy eyed in about five seconds of your time. See you in the morning. Good morning. Day three, up to the Chinese wall. Ooh, we're at view this morning. My goodness. Sun's coming up down the valley here, a little peak. Not the greatest night's sleep. Uh, <laughs> about 2.30 in the morning, I yelled out, hey. And JJ's like, uh, what's going on? 
I said, well, there's something in camp. And there was, there was something in camp and it was, you know, fairly large. It wasn't a squirrel. And, uh, but it sounded like a horse pawing with its front hoof. So something with hooves, I'm thinking, but we've seen no deer or elk sign or anything, to be quite honest. The first real scat we saw yesterday was bear. Fairly fresh with berries in it and stuff just up here on the trail. So yeah, it was really odd. There's this clumping sound that sounded like a hoofed animal. So I got the headlamp out and scanned around and I, you know, you don't see anything. So, <laughs> but it kept me awake for a while. So a little groggy this morning, but nothing a little coffee won't fix. And look where we're heading. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Gorgeous morning, not too hot. We're away earlier today to try to beat the heat of the mid to late afternoon, which is uh, fatiguing to say the least. So probably in the 12 mile range again today, get us down to uh, along Burnt Creek. Is that it, JJ? Cool. Burnt Creek, yep. So uh, yeah, but a bit of a climb before then. So get the panting meter ready. <gasps> Well, there it is. We climbed up a little rise, and boom. There's our target. <laughs> Still some work to do, as you can see. Let me zoom in for you a bit. Here we go. Yeah. Hello there. Yes, sir, e Bob. Ha! Little look back down the valley. The guy's having some uh, snacks. You can see from where we've come, and I'll just swing this around gently. You can see where we're going. So uh, we're almost five miles into the morning and uh, probably another two and change, 2.1 up to the, I'm guessing from the map, but 2.1 up to the uh, intersection with the CDT, which will be pretty exciting because we'll be right there on the Chinese wall. So a nice little break here. And the reason I'm showing you all this is because if you look at the map right here, we kind of bend in toward Moose Creek one last time before we start the climb. And if you're coming in our direction counterclockwise, then this is probably your last place to water up for a while, I think. Uh, actually, Moose Creek's getting pretty tiny up here, so um, just keep that in mind. And if you're coming down, this will be your first opportunity also to water up um, from the Chinese wall. So, yeah, a little break here, and then we're going that way. You can see the target. Isn't that something? Look at that. Milestone here entering the camping closure. No camping along the Chinese wall. And back here, just past John and down, probably four or five really well marked, heavy used trails must go down into a big campsite. And then when you see that limit for camping, it makes perfect sense. Seven and a quarter miles, almost peaked out. I'll intersect the CDT with the boys here in a second, but I mean, that's where we're going. And quite honestly, the climbing isn't done. We're gonna have to get up and over there. We know that. Little haze starting to build in from the fires on the other side of the Chinese wall. And this thing goes for miles that way and miles back the way I showed you. Hopefully, as we head down to the Burnt Creek area, we'll get some great views of the wall heading in that direction. I mean, you'd have to bend up and around here on the CDT to keep seeing it. Almost to the CDT, where I'm going to take a break with the guys. Here's a little perspective. Let me zoom in. There they are in the middle of your frame. Yeah. And then back out. Yeah, it's big. This is where I want to take a break. I've come down to the intersection. There's the CDT. Going that way, up the wall. Now I've just come from this cutoff, which takes you down Moose Creek. And I'm just going to sit here and wait for the guys. I probably came a little farther than they expected I would. But I did want to sit and have my little break here on the CDT. <laughs> Call me a nerd. Wow, so cool.
There's a good look back. You can see I mentioned earlier the wall kind of you go the trail kind of goes around to the left and then back along to the right along the wall up there in the center of your frame. Pretty darn cool. After about a mile of switchbacks, the goal is in sight. You can see here there's pretty much a corner. The wall goes up that way and then down that way. And I'm hearing some weird stuff, like a drone or a swarm of bees or a weed whacker. <laughs> little shot here of what I'm talking about with the uh, Chinese wall continuing on and the smoke is building in let me just step back here a little bit and show you if you look uh, look way out there you can see it's starting to haze in on us we've been pretty lucky on this trip so far but I think our luck has run out for the day just met a couple of gentlemen back there uh, camp down here about a mile or so uh, Doing some day hiking along the wall. So that was cool exchange some information Kind of wondering if they're camped in the vicinity. We were thinking of camping tonight But of course is if we can tuck in anywhere, so it's really no big deal That is the benefit of random camping Need a Flat spot and some water basically but First we got to get down to burnt creek and along it a bit See what our options are it shouldn't be too 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 much further I was joking earlier in the video about this, but this is an absolute rarity on this trail. Absolute rarity. This trail is in, I would call immaculate condition for the most part. What a what an effort they put in here to keep it that way. Super impressed. Super, super impressed. Just met a really nice group of folks with their horse party. Had a pack fall off. Uh, hoping to head down to that first camping spot. Um, down the creek we came up this morning so you know what's that four four and a half miles for them probably once they get themselves straightened out anyway really nice folks cool to see but uh, always tough when that happens because then you've got to redo everything and it's hot interesting this is right on the trail on the CDT uh, right on it <laughs> little fire pit creek could be down over the hill there but uh really maybe one place to put a tent of a decent size so i think we'll uh look down here uh, yeah all right well we're going to continue on first shot of uh, burnt creek and look at how clear that is Woo back down over the creek down to another campsite. It's still a bit early and we're still about a mile or so from where we had anticipated uh, camping, but I will let the boys catch up with me and uh, we can have a conversation because we could probably make this work. Of course, the water's right there. We've decided to press on a little further. Although I'm looking at my Gaia and I'm having the same, I think, little issue I had yesterday where I'm in this deep valley under trees and somehow it's just not catching up with me. I could be wrong, but uh, I just have that feeling. Anyway, there'll be more up here. We've seen a couple of camp spots now and I expect more, especially because we're on the CDT, right? So, Good news is it's nice and cool now that we're shaded in the forest. Makes it a lot easier. Crossing the creek again. So yeah, update. My Garmin just told me I can't send my position. And Gaia hasn't updated in probably a couple of miles. So again, another gap in the track because of these valleys. So I'll have to extrapolate at some point what today's mileage is for you because I don't think I'll have an accurate picture of it. Come the end of the day. 
Because what'll happen is, even if it catches up to me, it's gonna probably draw a straight line from the last known position to the next known position. And that will not be accurate mileage. This hasn't happened in ages. Very interesting. So if you're out here in the Bob, Moose Creek and now Burnt Creek, some GPS issues. And it doesn't seem to matter if it's Gaia or Garmin. There's just no connection to the sky. Finally opening up, finally some views and finally some GPS. So if you see this track, you're gonna see the straight line I thought you'd see. Now we have to find a camp. Little panorama of camp. Once again, John has exiled himself away from the gang. There's Jim setting up his tent. I'm over here, a little close to the eating area, but we're looking for spots without poop and uh, that are re re reasonably flat eating area. And then here's, uh, here's Burnt Creek. I'll show you more of that in a sec. You can't see it now because they've moved, but there's a horse party that's come in. Uh, this is a camp that would be used by horses. And there's another one across the way. Um, we did see some hiker camps today, but the one just up the way here, we didn't think we could fit three tents very easily. And here is a very interesting little place. Look at this. This is great to come down and get water or even get cleaned up. Look at that. It's like a little perfect walkway down there. You know, just down the ramp. Whoops, they're high. Down the ramp and then over there and there's your water. So, pretty neat. Well, let's camp for tonight. And it was a big day and I do want to say... Um, one, one thing I do want to say, actually, let me just swing this around. You see my ugly mug. Hi. Um, the mileage today will be at the front of the video, as it always is, on the start of the day. And it's going to be a pretty accurate estimate. Because I'm going to flash up on the screen what Gaia did. Here it is. See? So there, that straight line kills what I tracked today. And I'll have to snap it to the map. And that will give you a pretty, you know, within within a... 10th of a mile, 20th of a mile of where we were and what we tracked. So anyway, supper. Well, let's wrap on day three. And as I said a few seconds ago, I, I have no idea how far we went, but I'm going to guess, and you'll already know because I will have done the math after I uh, edit this video, I'm going to guess in the 14 mile range, which shortens our day tomorrow to somewhere in the 10 mile range. We'll find a place uh, probably before we get to the bridge that gets us out of here on that fork of the trail down to the parking lot and find a nice place along the river uh, for tomorrow night. And that sets up a nice short day for the guys uh, to get out and back home uh, on Tuesday morning. Yes, today's Sunday. So just a gorgeous night now. Uh, we've got the horses over here and uh, we just had our supper and it's Burnt Creek is not burnt. It's pretty good. <laughs> Anyway, we had an awesome day. We had awesome views. Uh, it was hot, but you know, you soldier through. That's what we do out here. And it was just, uh, it was a good one. Super happy. There it is. Perma smile. <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. Morning, day four. And our horse party, neighbors across the way. Just a little better view of them this morning. They really are far away, though. If you look at the perspective. A little shot of camp. We're getting packed up. I'm the slow one this morning, but I'm like the tortoise and the hare. It all comes together quickly at the end. Whoops. A little coffee and breakfast. Uh, another eventful evening. So uh, about 5 a.m. I hear Jim uh, in his tent going, Hey! Hey! So this is two nights in a row now. Maybe we're being followed. <laughs> So uh, something tripped his lines. So, you, you know, walking by the tent hits the guy lines. He's got a Durston tent. It's only got two lines. So they have a lot of tension on them. So Jim says at first he thought it was uh, like, you know, maybe a branch fell off a tree and, you know, stuff happens like that, right? Well, then it happened again. And now we think we see where it might have peed. I think you scared that poor thing, Jim. It's awful. Oh, yeah. Terrible. Oh, yeah. I got the headlamp out and, you know, searched around, but I couldn't see anything. But uh, I think he was, he was dreaming. Out of camp on time. And we're wandering down the river. My guess, we'll enter the burn, obviously, at some point. Which will open up our views, but also expose us to the heat. Which is why we wanted to get out a bit early. I think anywhere we camp tonight, randomly, by the bridge. 
is going to be exposed as well. So we'll uh, deal with that a little later. Gorgeous morning though. Nice chilly night, which is really nice after a hot day. So uh, rinse and repeat today. I do show this sometimes. There's a horse crossing, right? But look, let's just look to your left. And I'm on the CDT. So instead of rock hopping, I looked left and sure enough, there's a bridge. So I think we're gonna have pretty good conditions like this all the way along, because we are again on the CDT. Very nice. Just across the bridge, we, we met a couple day hikers who were heading up to the uh, Chinese wall today and this is obviously where they camped in their hammocks. When I lived in the US, there was a lot of hammock camping down here. Uh, I don't see it as much in Canada to be honest, but it was pretty popular when I lived in the Southeast. Morning. You're nuts cold this morning? No? It's just a joke. Jeez. Fussy squirrel. Almost a mile and a half from where we camped. You can see another, looks like a horse camp down there. Well-established trail going in. Some nice cover under the trees. I can see the fire pit. And uh, lots of places to put tents and tie up your horses. Yeah, another nice spot. Some people over there I won't show you. Out of respect for the privacy, but another campsite. So I've only walked maybe 10 minutes since we talked last. Lots of options along here, it's cool. I see you up there. Boy, you blend in. Wow, do you ever blend in? Hello there, hi, there you are. Wow, you blend in, look at that. Sorry as always for the jiggly video, but I had to zoom way in. Well, hello there. Very nice. Little view opening up. Been a lo oh, hello there. There goes a grouse. Hello, yes. Good morning. Morning, how are you? Sir? Okay, off we go. Just met a CDT through hiker. I want to say hi to Snake, uh, who did tell us his real name's Darren, but uh, trail name's Snake, which is interesting. He's exactly my age, and... Uh, Oh, and about a, what's he get left? 160? Less than 200, certainly, I would think, to finish the CDT. He's also done the PCT, and uh, certainly my new hero. Because, you know, at my age, you start thinking, okay, could I do these long trails? Could I do them all before I'm, you know, 60? Well, I think I could. <laughs> but, there'd be lots to discuss in that conversation. So, anyway... Great to meet him. We're giving him some, uh, I don't think he was aware that you couldn't camp anywhere along the Chinese wall. I'm sure there's a lot of people that aren't aware, to be honest. Um, so we showed him the map and he took some pictures of my marks and hopefully we've helped him plan his day a little bit. All right, time for me to keep walking. Another nice little camping spot right along the river. Trail's gonna veer up left here. And like many we've seen on this section of the CDT, the campsites are basically on the trail. And right along the creeks or rivers. Hmm. Heat of the day is building in, oh my, almost high noon. And uh, for a trail that looks mostly downhill when you plot it out, been a lot of ridge climbing and in the sun. <laughs> so yeah, a little hot. This is a nice respite here in these trees because you know we're I'm getting into the burn area now, which is why we have some views, but this is uh, a lot more tolerable in here, that's for sure. Probably four and a half miles to go to the bridge. A couple hours probably at my pace. Maybe a little, a little less if I don't take a long break. The guys lingered back there for a bit and uh, said they'll catch me. So I'm just gonna keep plodding along 
in this heat. I think that's smart if you're out with a group, you know, of experienced hikers that do their own thing once in a while. Plot along at your own pace. Back out and exposed, you can see the trail cutting up there. I just uh, came down out of the woods into this clearing and almost stepped on a large snake. Certainly got my attention. It was gone before I could get the video going, but uh, stepping on a snake, just for the record, not recommended. Nice little primitive campsite down there by the river. That's the kind of thing it'd be nice to find close to the bridge tonight. Um, you know, if you're near the bridge, well, you can't be within 500 feet, as I've shown you and told you, but uh, if we're near the bridge, we're probably going to be pretty exposed. So if we could get within, you know, a couple thousand feet, half a mile, whatever, and find something like that, a little bit of shade, that'd be pretty awesome. At the top of another crest, been a lot of these, actually, you can look back from where I've come. Down there and up around that corner. I'll pan around slowly. Certainly now into the exposed. And I expect that to be pretty much the majority of the rest of the trip to the bridge. I can see ahead the valley I'm gonna cut right up with the boys and head back to Benchmark. But uh, not a good view for you yet, so I'll point that out probably next right in the center of your frame you can see a bit of a knob with a bit of a meadow on top right there and that is well I'm gonna go down to the left and then circle around that generally speaking and then up you can kind of see that cut between the uh, hills closest to me and the ones that are a little hazier in the background and the bridge will be down there right by that turn and that will take us back to benchmark a little more work to do obviously generally in the downhill direction which is great in this heat because it is absolutely stifling right now with no breeze it's all right we're tough aren't we what's amazing to me is i've been up high looking in this direction for forever it seems like and i've yet to see the bridge different sight lines for sure than what I expected. I think the trick now will be finding somewhere we can get out of the sun for camp tonight. I mean, you could theoretically keep going up around the corner a ways, which would get you out of the sun pretty quickly as it continues its westward trek. But, uh, like I said, I'm a little ahead of the guys, so I can't go any further than the bridge. So I'll go down here and find some shade and uh, wait for them to roll along. Here are the signs that complete the loop of the lollipop. So uh, if you follow that analogy, we're back on the stick. <laughs> yeah, and there's the bridge I mentioned probably just seconds ago. Kind of just tucked down in there. That's why I couldn't see it. Interesting. I'm gonna go down here, as I just said, wait for the guys, try to find some shade. That will be challenging. Just sat here and had some electrolytes. Look at this old cup. I've had this for so long, it's old and stained, just like me. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so the only shade in the world is right here under this bridge. Um, lots of flies. I've said this summer, I haven't had many bugs, but uh, there's quite a few around here. And they seem to like the shade as much as I do. Just sitting here waiting for the guys. And as I sit here, I look around and I'm really, really looking around. Where could we camp 500 feet from the bridge that offers us some shade? Because the sun is still high in the sky. It won't set till, you know, 7.30 over there somewhere. And uh, pardon the shaky video. There we go. Yeah, so... You know, you have half a mind to kind of wander up that way a little bit and get, get at least get behind that next ridge. Well, you might get some relief a lot sooner because uh, it's hot. Ah, oh, but the water, cold and lovely. Well, one last look around the bridge. Great view from here. Just beautiful. 
We're all back together. I had a nice long break. I actually cooked myself some cup of soup, which was a lovely thing. And then I went and hid in the shade under the bridge. It's funny, I saw a horse party come through, then a bunch of hikers. And uh, on a hot day, this seems to be the place on both sides of the bridge where people will go in and have a break and get out of the heat. Speaking of heat, we decided to go up the trail a bit, a little closer to the trailhead and find some shelter. Be another few hours probably of this uh, really intense sun and there's nothing here to protect us. So go up and find some water and hopefully tuck in to a shaded area. Just before we make the big sweeping right turn to head back to our benchmark, the valley that started this hike a few days ago. Look at that, I'll just zoom in too, here we go. Look at that. That was an, I just loved it up that way. Just beautiful. Bunny sighting. Hello. Yeah. No matter how long the day, there's always time for a bunny. Um, okay, so we're uh, very close to a creek. And then 0.7 miles after that, another creek. When we get to that second creek, if we haven't found a campsite, or even if we do, then the debate is you're only, you know, a mile and a half from the car. Picnic tables, you know, all that amenities. So what do you do? So the guys were just debating who are the ones that have to drive. And uh, we're going to be flexible and see what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to make a decision. What do you guys think we're we going to do? Well, it's a tough one, but uh, we're one and three quarter miles from the trailhead right now. It's 5.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. And uh, dinner time's approaching. And why not? I think I think we go to the trailhead. There's a great campground there. Sure is. Yeah, beautiful. And why not? Okay. Is, is camp any, camp the any, night there. Is there any cold beer? There's it, not. Oh. If that's we look a, really hard, there might be. That's in Augusta. That's Augusta. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> No wonder I'm single. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my car and get one of those camping spots. And when you guys arrive, we'll uh, drop the packs and we'll find out how's the hike. Yeah. So you can start rehearsing that now. What do you think, really? <laughs> How long a version do you want? Well, we'll see. I can always edit it. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm off to the trailhead. We'll see you there. John needs a bit of a snack, a little hydration, so I'm going to book it. Okay, so there's a guy using a whistle and hauling out hay bear, calling out hay bear. I have to tell you something. This is important. If you hike anywhere where there are marmots, do not use a whistle. You're thinking, geez, do why? Marmots whistle. That's how they call out danger. So if you're whistling with a whistle where there are marmots and grizzly bears, the bear might actually be attracted to your whistle. Just something to consider when you're in those in the zone with those two animals together. Back to the bridge. And Gaia has messed up again, I guess due to the tree cover. So I will extrapolate whatever you saw from uh, mileage today will be kind of extrapolated. See this Sun Fork Trail number 202 and it, I mean, it looks like it goes that way but really you just go this way that's the way I just came back I'm pretty sure that's what I'm saying like it's confusing so well thank you Bob you've been a good host always bittersweet when you see the parking lot <laughs> There it is. So, I'll go get organized for the guys and then we'll find out how's the hike. Well, you can see we're here at this beautiful campsite, which was a surprise for us when we got here. And I mean, we knew coming back to it, look at us, we got a picnic table, we can cook and it's comfy and that's a little different than what we've had the last few nights. <laughs> uh, but it's been epic and awesome. And I gotta ask you both, and we'll start with John. How's the hike? You know, you know, Stuart, it was awesome. I. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, the open 
uh, burnt areas. It was absolutely beautiful. The grade of the trails are absolutely phenomenal, what they do here in the Bob Marshall. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend to all your viewers to come down to Montana and enjoy, enjoy this and tremendous hike. Yeah. Uh, JJ, JJ, how, what did you think? I loved it. I really did. Um, the one thing I really liked was every day you turned a corner and you had a new view. You know, like, like, like what I mean by that is you, you turned a corner and there was literally a new valley and it opened up a whole new view to you. And that happened numerous times through the walk, you know, and I've been on hikes before where the views are limited. And, uh, uh, no naming names. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but here, no, is great. Uh, John mentioned the grades of the of the trails themselves. I think I think we did some math the other day, and we thought maybe eight percent was max. Yeah. And that's nice. I mean, for a hiking standpoint, that's great, um, especially on those ups. The trails themselves in great condition. Uh, the weather didn't hurt. I mean, we're we're in a dry summer. True. Uh, so it could be muddy out here, but but no, the trails were great, um, and I just I just love walking along a trail, and all of a sudden, there's a campsite, mm. you know, and yep. good or bad, big or small, you know, you you wander in there, you have a look if it's getting toward the end of the day. Now, saying that, you should have probably planned on your on your mapping for where you're camping each night, <laughs> but say, but but really. Uh, this morning we passed three campsites within maybe a mile. Yep. And nice ones too. That's, yeah. Nice yeah. ones, yeah. 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 And that's yeah. the way it is out here. So yeah. I really enjoyed the bob and I, I look forward to getting back here. Yeah, agreed. I mean, we planned this trip really quickly. So, you know, and that's the great thing about random camping. We can camp where we need to. You know, you try to leave no trace course, so you use established campsites and things like that. But and it's funny you talk about the grade. We've talked a lot about the grade of the hills. I grade the I grade the hike like an A plus. And I measure grade in how hard I'm panting up the hill. How much am I sweating, you know, and dying? And there were some sections of that. Yes. But but the, the trail and even the trail condition was such that it was it made it just a lot easier. So yeah. really great to be uh, meet these guys and be out with these guys. JJ in the mountains, I'm gonna link below his YouTube channel. Check it out. I do, and I think it's awesome, and I think you will too. And I'm looking forward to seeing a different perspective um, of this exact same hike, which is always cool. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.